recently when I went to an AST conference, I ran across a new educational robot uh, system called Ablix, at least new to me. Uh, they're from uh, Shanghai, China. And the controller kind of reminds you of Lego. Let's see. So they have system here. Just crowding through their PDF of the uh, advertisement. This part here interesting. Let me zoom in a little bit. So their controller. It have a flowchart software. I get to that a little bit later. It's, it has some interesting uh, structural part. So the gear train is usual. But you have, look, see that they have bevel gear here, so it can have uh, X, Y, Z component in all six directions. So that's an interesting system. Let's see. We got a little bit to scroll down. So look how many components here. Let's see. approach to example. Let's see. Ah, this one. Traffic light, windless conveyor belt, and out the line tracer. Light scanner, rotating mode. Oh, a washer. <laughs> Magnetic key kit. A blender. Auto lay. That kind of interesting in name. Industrial robot, like a, a pick and place into a bin of different parts. Oh, an NC machine, numerical control machine, elevator. And this is a piece of part. Very interesting. Okay. Well, you probably already noticed over here that they have. Humanoid series also. And I've seen it, but I haven't seen it running during that time when I did a demo. The interesting part that I want to share with is construction why they have more a step on type of construction. This one is very interesting. So, very quickly, step on for the servo motor into the frame. I haven't seen the robot working, so I don't know how long, how, how firm, or how tight are these connections. That's a controller. We have a remote controller. And, uh, the most important, interesting is this one. So they have software. One, a 3D simulation. You can build your model. Well, of course, using their parts into here. And then also they have an action editor. Motion pages, steps, and interface with slider on this side. I haven't seen it used, so I guess it's eventually this is going to be like a 3D visual feedback of the human robot. So they have a slider here to change the various position control. They also have a regular IDE, you know, for coding. This one, uh, they do have it uh, available free. You can download from uh, 
that website, and I will go into uh, this software uh, soon. So you see graphical base, but you can also see uh, baby and the resolution and upgrade, uh, but some um, see color behind it also. So let's try that and see. So when you install it called VGC version 4.1 now, and when you pull it up, this is in general what it looks like. The main menu is over here on the panel, so they have program blocks. So that's why you create new subprograms, subprogram return. So this is essentially this is a panel when you create uh, functions. Control block. They have multiple loop, infinite loop, conditional loop, compare, if and else, if and else kind of thing. And then of course we need to have break. And the sensor block, which essentially is the uh, input side of thing, light detection, temperature detection, grayscale, flame, voice, switch, magnetic, key detection, system, time reset, time, analog input, digital input, oh, there's some general stuff here too, uh, start a counter, get a counter, stop the counter, clear the counter, wow, so and that's timing, internal timing, read some stuff from the EEPROM, write some the execute block, or to reset the motor, stop the motor, have some display, just wait, turn on some LED, activation is automatic, calculate things, like there's a buzzer somewhere, initialize the server, so the digital server, look at the digital output also, interesting, so that's what it is. Let's pull up one of the examples that they give us uh, when you install the software. So to the example, this is uh, the fine line following. One important to notice is in the example, so you see that two piece of code, there's an FLW extension, which is a flowchart type, and there's an extension called .jc also. So let's upload that thing in. So first you see that uh, main graphic as usual, reading from some EEPROM. You know that that's it. So if you create something and you move it close enough, for example, you close enough to something, it just connect by itself. And then you like it trash in here. So this is the uh, original code here. So in the program block you say that it's several subroutines like SIG L. That's a subprogram name SIG L. Left I guess. If you edit it goes in. You can see it read something from port. That's why you have to be careful with your mouse. <laughs> you can pull it in and out. So you can see that just graphically you can stick in different things. Let me try something. Temperature detection. Where do I put it? I put it here. See if I close it up, we'll pop it. It's insert itself. Pretty cool. Let's double click on it and see. So show that you have input different channel. Looks like I have 12 IO channel looks like. It gives you a little hint if you convert the compare block after the detection, go ahead and use it. If else block, okay. So I don't need that one. I just let's see if I can drag it. Go to drop can and it was like before. So far so good. These are the other one. Let's go back to the main program. Let's see view, tools, window. Oh, here we go. Edit. So I can edit each of these subroutines. Looks like I have five of them. On the main program, I'll create a new subroutine and delete subprogram. So let's go back to the main. And let's see, I need to edit turn L. Interesting. Let's see what else. Uh, go back to the main program. View. Let's 
see about showing JC code. So seek AI actually when you're in C code, it really uh, subroutine one. Turn left, turn L, it really subroutine two, and so forth. Very interesting. And then so I calculate here in that statement there on time subroutine five. And close. So it's a standard like C program. I guess that they had a file, and then interesting. So some of these uh, variables were pre predefined or automatic generated when we create the functions in the main program. Let's see where they let that come from. Clone one, clone two, rom one, rom two. Yeah, here we go. So once I put a JC in, this is sick L, which is really separate. Here, that's a statement. That's a while loop. This one, one. That's the if statement. Oh, clone one. Uh, come on, have to go to here. Uh, I messed up somewhere. Let's see if I can undo. Ah, no undo. Myself here somewhere. So let's close this one. No. Let's get it back in. Example. And view GC code. Correspond to the while loop. Very nice. Four. Zero. Column one AI one is no. Uh oh, we have something wrong. Okay, this should correspond to the if statement here, but it didn't jive to the uh -huh. What is this one? Let's see. Show that there's only one input zero, which it should be that one. Interesting. Uh, this is the if statement. It goes to that. Or three go to the else part. And we want some more one. Ah, oh, and one of these statements. Let's see. Oh, I see. So there's two commands in there. Power motor 0, 100, power motor 1. I guess we have two motors, so it's in there. So that's why they have two of these statements here. Uh-huh. That makes sense. But this command here. Oh, this is port 1. Double click on it. Yeah, using port 1 to do some kind of condition. Grayscale, better than EEPROM, power 1. sense. So you go to here and go down to this statement. Very interesting. So from a point of view, let's say you have a younger student. This can be very handy to teach them how to go from a, uh, from a bigger picture of just uh, logic and flow chart and they can see the C code equivalent to it. That's a pretty good idea. One of the better implementation of this uh, approach. Let's see. Tool window. There's also a separate something called JC window. Ah. So here you have the more the regular code. The regular C code. You can see all of that. Let's see. We can, let me edit something.
get it, see what do we do. Save as. Uh, so this part here, the part that's saved as uh, GC code. So I change this one in the sick else function. Let's go and then you see this one changed to that. Let's go back to the flowchart window and sick L. It was this one that they modified. But it looked like it modified back to the flow chart. So interesting, interesting. Let's see if it's still there. So I didn't save that one. Oh, this is what. Oh, I see. Very interesting here. So, flowchart window was five grayscale line falling FLW. So, I assume you go to JC, you go to five grayscale line scale. Yes. LW, and it kept that code. Previously, I saved a five grade scale test open. And that one did keep the change that I did to it. Interesting. So there are two of them here. This is a five grade scale following and five grade of test JC. Very interesting. Uh, however, I see you go to flow chart, this won't change. Okay. There could be some benefit to so that uh, when we turn uh, learn T students, they can modify the original program, but they can edit uh, their JC code. If they feel up to it, they can go to more detail. So, uh, interesting robotic system. Right now, uh, only RoboShop sell the uh, Creative Brick series. I don't see it sold anywhere in the U.S. yet for the humanoid, but uh, this looks interesting. 